Bonjour, my feng shui friends. Can you believe it? We're just one week away from the Paris Olympics, and I'm here in the city to tell you all about it. I'm super excited. Last weekend, I was out and about in Paris, enjoying all of the touristy spots. I went to the famous Marché de Puce de Saint-Ouen, which is one of the best vintage flea markets in Paris and maybe the world. It was so amazing. Then, you know, I went over to the Seine to a local bar and watched the Wimbledon's men's final, which was amazing. Congratulations, Alcaraz and Spain. That was so fun too. Then I just wandered around Paris on my way home, just soaking up all of Paris before the tourist invasion begins. The city of Paris is gearing up big time for the games. Barriers, signage, and stages are popping up everywhere. Trains are being rerouted and prices are skyrocketing. I was supposed to escape the madness, but my plans changed, so I'm staying put and I'm actually super excited. How often in my lifetime am I going to be able to live in a city that's hosting the Olympic Games? Can you imagine New York City hosting the Olympic Games? Uh, I don't think so. So now's my time. Today, I'll dive into how Paris as a city can shine even brighter on the world stage using feng shui as a guide during the Olympics. I'll also share feng shui tips for businesses and Parisian residents to make the most of this time during the Olympics. So, with me, grab your café au lait and let's get started. First up, some feng shui advice for the city of Paris as a whole. What advice could I give? I know, I know, this beautiful city of Paris has it all already. City, art, romance, what more could it have? I would just have the city of Paris ask itself two questions. What does Paris want to be known for during the Olympics? And secondly, how does Paris want to be seen on the world stage? The city can set an intention to guide that incredible energy. Setting an intention for energy to follow is a very important exercise in feng shui. Maybe Paris wants to be known as the innovation capital, where history meets the future. The key is to decide then to allow that intention to shape everything from city planning to public events. And number two, feng shui advice for Parisian businesses. Parisian businesses usually get a bad rap, but honestly, I feel that Parisian businesses have gotten so much better. Here's where I'm gonna bring in the feng shui concept of yin and yang. Yin and yang is one of the important tenets in feng shui, where it says that balance and harmony is important. Yin is the feminine, it's the slower energy, and yang is the masculine, the faster energy. So it's really important that we integrate the two together to have that balance and harmony. So back to you small businesses. We need a little bit of yang and we need a little bit of yin. So let me tell you what you could do yang-wise. Businesses could take advantage of yang energy by being visible and communicative, active energy. Signs should be visible and they should be very clear. Telling, you're setting your intention, don't forget that you want people to be attracted to your business and you tell the energy how it's to be guided. Is it going to be guided towards the food, towards the register, wherever it is that you want. That's how you guide the yang energy. And more yang energy is to be communicative. Set up your website, make sure you have your menu on there, have photos, tell people what to expect. Oh, and one thing really important is to take reservations. People are gonna be busy during this time and you wanna make it as easy as possible for them. Do I even need to say this? Stay open, don't close early. People are going to wanna see your lights on, be attracted to you, and they will start coming in in hordes. Now on the flip side, let's look at the yin energy. It's the slower, quieter energy that's needed to balance out the yang energy. So make sure that your spaces are comfy and inviting so that tourists can literally put their feet up and relax after a long energized day. And please, no price gouging. I know people are saying that price is gonna be increasing, sometimes double, but please try to keep it friendly. <laughs> friendly so people can afford to come to your places. A caring, nurturing, welcoming establishment will really invite in those people who will become lifelong customers. Remember, a happy customer is a repeat customer. And number three, advice to Parisian residents. 
We are the heartbeat of this city. So once again, let's look at the yang and the yin energy. As for the yang, if you're staying in Paris during the Olympics like I am, we need to stay in action. Engage with the tourists, share your local favorite spots, and show them the magic of Parisian life because it really is magical. And now equally important is the yin energy, the slower receptive energy. Be helpful, be nurturing. Maybe it's as simple as helping with directions or sharing a hidden gem of a bakery in your neighborhood. I have mine, so let me know if you want that address. And of course, it's going to be a crazy time, so don't forget to rejuvenate. Enjoy some quiet time in one of Paris's beautiful parks and recharge your own battery. So there you have it. Whether you're the city itself, a business owner, or a Parisian resident like myself, there's a blend of feng shui energy that can help Paris shine even brighter than it already does. So set those intentions, stay open and welcoming, be part of the action, and always take time to rejuvenate. Thanks for joining me today on this little feng shui energetic journey through Paris. If you want to learn about all things feng shui related, subscribe to my channel, click the bell for alerts for when I release new videos about living an intentional feng shui life. Remember, feng shui is not a luxury, but a necessity. And I'll see you soon as I give you some more about the Olympic Games in Paris. See you next week.